My girlfriend has never had a correct moral view, and she has always been entangled with her ex. Every time I express opposition angrily, she calmly accuses me of being petty, because she knows I would never break up with her. Later, I showed my determination to break up with her through my actions, but she cried, holding my thigh, and she had a mental breakdown that day. When I told Willow that I wouldn't care about her and Ito Makoto's affair anymore, she was stunned and then laughed very happily. Ha ha. Jacob, you're not only magnanimous now, but you've also become humorous. That's right. Don't always look sad. Like everyone owes you money. I'm distressed if you're upset. A man needs to be generous, can't be petty, and especially cannot be so sensitive. Like you are delusional. Ito Makoto is very pitiful. He can't be stimulated. Although he and I have broken up, if he sees us so loving, he will have a mental breakdown. Hey, why is such an excellent person like him depressed? What if Ito Makoto does something silly? Not only will I be terribly upset, but you will also feel guilty for the rest of your life, right? I definitely wouldn't feel guilty if Ito Makoto died. I would buy fireworks to celebrate. It's not that I am cold-hearted, but that he is clearly pretending. It's just that every time I said that Ito Makoto's pitiful look is just an act, Willow would hysterically argue with me. She scolded me for being inhumane, accused me of jealousy, and called me a cold-blooded creature. She said she never did anything wrong. She wanted me to be more positive and not to have such dark, dirty, sordid thoughts. Instead of being jealous, I should ponder on how to love her more. I am tired of arguing. Willow, we... I hadn't finished my sentence when her phone rang. Curing the rent on the first love, I knew who was calling. Ito Makoto always did this. Whenever I had a date with Willow, he would spare no effort to disrupt it. Liu, I'm in so much pain. I don't want to live anymore. I feel my sky is gray. My world is cold. Does no one like me? You are not with me either. Ito Makoto, don't be sad. I'll come to accompany you. Ito Makoto was pretending. Willow was as panicked as if her parents had died. She hurried into the car and drove in the wrong direction. She ran three red lights. She floored the pedal. She accelerated to 150 on a row with a speed limit of 60. The vehicles on the row were startled and all braked abruptly. With the drivers rolling down their windows to curse, are you in a hurry to die? Don't harm others if you want to die. Willow turned a deaf ear and continued to speed wildly disappearing in an instant. Whenever it comes to Ito Makoto, she loses her sense and reason. She puts everything and everyone, including me, aside. I used to be jealous, unwilling, and angry. I'm her official boyfriend. Why should I live like a spare tire? I tried to compete. I even stooped to petty tricks. I put a thermometer in hot water to pretend that I had a fever and begged Willow not to leave with a haggard face. But she said, Jacob, enough. Can anyone's temperature reach 55 degrees? You'd be dead at 45 degrees. Can you please stop acting? Ito Makoto hasn't eaten or drunk anything for half a month. I need to take care of him. You see, she's very smart. She knows that no one can have a fever of 55 degrees. I was lying. But she's also very stupid. A person can only survive without food and water for a maximum of seven days. If you could survive half a month of fasting, you'd be an immortal. Ito Makoto was lying too. But Willow always believes Ito Makoto. She was as stupid as an idiot in front of her ex. Maybe it's because women only act stupid in front of the man they love. Actually, all my pain stems from the fact that she doesn't love me as much. After being a bootlicker for two years, I'm tired. Effort doesn't necessarily bring results. It might also be that the effort is in the wrong direction. So I plan to officially break up with her today, dot dot, unfortunately. She didn't even give me a chance to propose a breakup. After midnight, Willow hadn't returned, so I went to sleep. Before, whenever she stayed overnight at Ito Makoto's place, I would be in agonizing pain. I was like a restless wolf in a zoo, with red eyes and sleepless all night. I was afraid that they would betray me at night. I daren't call to urge her to come back because she would get angry. I could only sneak to Ito Makoto's house in the middle of the night. I stuck my neck out, Counting like a fool how many rooms in his house had lights on. If two rooms had lights on, I would be overjoyed. If only one room had the lights on, I would be discouraged. If it was completely dark, I would feel electrocuted. Once I stealthily arrived at Ito Makoto's front door, pressing my ear against it to listen for any strange sounds inside. 
I was nearly caught by a security guard who mistook me for a thief. When Willow came back, the question I most wanted to ask was, how did you sleep at night? But I dare not ask and can only pretend to be magnanimous in the middle of the night. I would secretly get out of bed from her discarded clothes. I would search for signs of infidelity. I used to be so low. To say I was a sycophant like a dog is an insult to dogs, fortunately. I have come to realize that loving a woman who doesn't care about you is tantamount to slow suicide. So now I sleep very soundly, if it's going to rain or if mom's going to get married. Let it be. At 1 a.m., I received a text message from Willow. She seemed to remember that I didn't get in the car, sorry. I forgot to let you get in the car in my hurry. Fortunately, Ito Makoto didn't do anything silly. I'm not going home tonight. Don't call me. Okay, I just put him to sleep. And he's as quiet as a baby now. Definitely don't use the excuse of delivering clothes to cause trouble. Last time you did that it was too embarrassing. Willow was referring to the time when I was mistaken for a thief by the security guard. I lied saying I was delivering clothes for Willow. She didn't believe it, and we had a big fight. She scolded me for being lecherous and disgusting. She gave me the silent treatment for a whole month. No talking. No laughing. No communication. Treating me like air. Before, I was most afraid of her giving me the cold shoulder. Wishing she would have a big fight with me or even stab me. As long as she doesn't ignore me. This time, I glanced at the message, changed my position and continued to sleep. Ting. Another message came. Didn't see the message. You are not hiding outside peeping again, are you? I'm telling you to go right away, or I will really get angry. I didn't read the content of what Willow sent afterwards. I just turned off my phone. Jacob, wake up. I was nudged a few times and opened my eyes to see Willow back. Did you wait up all night for me? I told you not to wait. You went to sleep? Willow was surprised to see me without dark circles under my eyes. Earlier if I didn't have enough rest, my dark circles would be heavier than a pandas. Do you have time? I want to say something. I intended to bring up the breakup again, but her phone rang. This time it wasn't Ito Makoto, but the traffic police. Yesterday, Willow had sped, driven in the wrong direction, run a red light, crossed a solid line, and even knocked down a tree. She violated almost all the traffic rules one could violate. How could she not be discovered in a city full of surveillance cameras? She got fined 12 points and had her driver's license revoked. Willow made a pained face and loudly complained about the traffic police being unfriendly. I was saving someone. How can they treat me like that? I won't accept this, Jacob. Help me file a complaint. Even though Willow doesn't love me much, she still trusts my capabilities. She has gotten into the habit of throwing all her problems at me to solve. I'm not just her spare tire. I'm also her versatile assistant. Okay, dot double quotes. I knew you could do it. How can I not have a driver's license? Then I can't show up by Ito Makoto's side whenever needed. He can't live without me. Willow was very pleased. I said, give me Ito Makoto's medical history of depression and evidence of his suicide attempt yesterday, such as his injury report. And I'll help you appeal. Willow's face changed. Jacob, you're so awful. Do you want others to laugh at Ito Makoto? She got angry and walked out. Just as I was about to stop her and break up, my phone rang as if it was bad timing, my parents said they want to come and see me. It seems like the breakup has to be put off for a few days. My parents have been urging me to get married. They've met Willow before, and my mom disagreed with our relationship from the start. Son, I think this girl isn't right for you. My mom suggested I break up, saying she had several suitable candidates to introduce to me. I was very in love with Willow before, of course, or refused her. Now I don't want to love anyone. And I'm not going to see other people, so I still need to use Willow as my excuse. This is the first time I've used her in two years. People often say that loving someone is hard, but not loving someone is easy. Willow was tired last night. She doesn't have to work at the weekend, so she went back and slept all morning. When she came out at noon, half asleep and found out that I didn't cook and didn't wash the clothes she changed last night. Her face immediately turned very ugly. Jacob, I just praised you yesterday for being reasonable. Why are you being unreasonable to me today? Not cooking. Not washing clothes. Are you protesting against me? I told you yesterday Ito Makoto was trying to kill himself. You should know. Human life is more important than anything. I followed Willow's words. You did the right thing. I'm not mad. 
Just now I was busy with the company's business. Seeing my calm attitude, Willa's anger seemed to lessen a bit. Are you sincerely saying that? Yes. My parents are coming in a few days, so I hope you can take some time to accompany them. It won't take up much of your time. Okay. As long as it doesn't conflict with E. Tomokoto's matters. I didn't cook, so I ordered takeout for lunch. In the evening, Willow had a company dinner at a restaurant on the outskirts of the city. I didn't want to go, but Willow couldn't drive, so I had to be the driver. The restaurant was in the south, but I drove towards the north. Because I didn't want to be arranged by Willow to pick up Ito Makoto after dropping her off. This sort of thing has happened many times. Gas is quite expensive. I gotta save where I can. Seeing my initiative, Willow smiled very smugly. She praised. Jacob, you really have become sensible. I was just thinking of asking you to pick up Ito Makoto. People with depression need to participate in group activities more. When we got to the bottom of Ito Makoto's house, Willow bounced up the stairs to call him. After a while, the two of them walked down laughing and talking, Ito Makoto, depressed. The stray dogs frolicking on the roadside are not as happy as him. The two naturally sat in the back of the car. As long as Ito Makoto is around, Willow never sits in my passenger seat. The restaurant is more than 20 kilometers away. There was a traffic jam on the road, so it took more than an hour to drive. The two of them chatted happily the whole way, reminiscing about their youth. They were high school classmates. I didn't know about their past. I used to try to interject, but it would always invite Willow's disdain. You don't even know the people we were talking about. Stopped interrupting. This time I knew better and kept my mouth shut for the whole ride. Compared to a real driver, I was probably only missing a pair of white gloves. When we arrived at the dinner, Ito Makoto sat very closely to Willow as if declaring his ownership. During the meal, they served each other dishes without caring about hygiene. Meanwhile, at home, Willow always claimed to be a germaphobe. Once she threw a fit because I mistakenly used her toothbrush. Many people misunderstood the relationship between Willow and Ito Makoto, thinking he was Willow's real boyfriend. Willow didn't explain. Ito Makoto squinted at me, his face full of triumph and provocation. He liked to provoke me, make me angry and instigate quarrels between me and Willow. Then he would feign innocence and hypocritically advise us to reconcile. He played both the good guy and the bad guy, and it always worked. In the past, I always looked very distressed. But this time, I held up my teacup and smiled at him. Enjoy your meal. Ito Makoto's face turned very awkward. He felt a sense of loss as if his plan had failed. Willow also noticed, and there was a hint of confusion in her eyes. When I used to argue with Ito Makoto out of jealousy, she always said I was annoying. But she actually quite enjoyed the feeling of being pursued. My calm demeanor these days made her somewhat uncertain. Handsome, did you come alone? Can I sit here? A sexy, voluptuous beauty came over. Jacob, come over here. Willow suddenly called me out loud. I gave the lady a polite smile and sat down on the other side of Willow. Everyone else looked at us confused. Not sure what the relationship between the three of us was. On the way back, Ito Makoto pretended to be drunk, rubbing against Willow like moss. He's drunk, Willow uncharacteristically explained to me. She never used to explain. Then I'll drive slower, to prevent him from vomiting. I didn't care for Ito Makoto. I just didn't want him to dirty my car. Susan at the front desk is disgusting. Everyone says she's willing to hook up with anyone. Willow suddenly said something random. It took me a moment to realize she was talking about that beauty. When we got to Ito Makoto's house, she helped the pretending to be drunk Ito Makoto upstairs. Half an hour later, I received a call from Willow. She asked in surprise, Why did you leave? I thought you were going to stay there to take care of Ito Makoto tonight. There was a moment of silence on the phone. He, he isn't that drunk tonight. He can take care of himself. Can you come back and pick me up? While she was still speaking, I heard Ito Makoto's heart-trenching wails through the phone. Oh, I'm such a useless waste. I feel so helpless, Jacob, I. Before Willow could even open her mouth, I had already hung up the phone. Old cliches. There's no need to repeat them so many times. My parents' train was arriving at 9 the next morning. Our town had built a new railway station, which was very complex. First-time visitors would get lost. They wouldn't know where to get a taxi or how to exit the station. Both of my parents are from rural areas. They would definitely find it inconvenient. 
I was supposed to pick them up, but there were urgent matters at the company that I couldn't get away from. Coincidentally, I received a call from Willow. Her voice was a little tired. It seemed she had had a long night. Sigh. I really can't let Ito Makoto drink anymore. He starts crying when he drinks. I took care of him all night long. I only managed to put him into his bedroom in the second half of the night. I put up with it on the couch for half a night. I'm so tired now. She seemed to be complaining. But I heard another meaning in her words. She was telling me that she didn't do anything inappropriate with Ito Makoto last night. In the past, if she took the initiative to explain, I would be happy for a day. But now, I no longer care. Could you do me a favor? My parents' train arrives at 9. Would you mind fetching them? I'm afraid they will get lost. I said it very politely, already prepared for her to refuse and brainstorm alternative solutions. Sure. She agreed very readily. I haven't seen your parents in a long time. Leave it to me. You can rest assured. Decides. Why are you being so polite? As it turned out, she was not worth trusting at all. At 12 noon, I received a call from my mother. Son, your father has low blood sugar. He can't wait much longer. Can you ask Willow if she's coming or not? Parents are like that. They don't want to bother me unless it's necessary. My parents got off the train at 9 and didn't see Willow waiting to pick them up. They didn't dare to wander around, afraid of getting lost. They didn't dare to urge Willow, fearing that Willow would be upset. They waited for a full three hours until my father felt unwell. Then they contacted me. Since I said I had a meeting in the morning, they were afraid to call early fearing it would affect me. I threw my phone down, hurriedly drove towards the high-speed rail station. On the way, Willow called. Sorry, Ito Makoto was crying all morning. I forgot about picking up your parents. I'm going now. Willow, we should break up. Willow was stunned. Then her voice suddenly rose. Jacob, could you stop being so petty as a man? A few days ago, you were quite reasonable. Why are you causing trouble again now? I didn't go because I had a reason. Ito Makoto kept silent in the morning. No matter how I asked him, he didn't respond. Do you know how worried I was? I can't leave him alone at home. Can I? Even if I don't pick up your parents, they can take a taxi by themselves, right? They are not senile. You are so disappointed in me because you want to break up with me over this trivial thing. Where are we having lunch? I'll treat. Okay. Consider it an apology. If your parents badmouth me for this, then I think they're really mean. I'm even doubting their character now. There were a lot of cars at noon and I was constantly watching the road conditions, so I didn't hang up the phone, letting Willow prattle on. Willow, we're over. I'm serious. In fact, I wanted to propose this face to face, but I was always interrupted and I don't want to wait anymore. Let's start now. I glanced at the clock in the car. At 12.13 p.m. on May 22nd, we're completely over. From now on, there's no relationship between you and me. You hang up. I'm driving. Willow was angry. Jacob, as a man, have you also learned to threaten people with breaking up? Let me tell you, the right to propose a breakup is a woman's privilege. You're not qualified to do that. Aren't you afraid that I might actually agree? By then, you won't even have a place to cry. Although I was a bit late, do you really need to hound me about it? As if I owe you something. It seems that I've been too nice to you these last few days. It made you feel like you can do whatever you want. Just as Ito Makoto said. One shouldn't be too good to you. Otherwise, you will take advantage of me. She hung up the phone angrily. Based on my experience, she was probably going to give me the cold treatment again. I suspect Willow has received professional training in this area. She is really good at giving the cold shoulder. If I don't compromise, she is very likely to keep giving me the silent treatment. Because she wants to have absolute control in our relationship. So she can't be wrong, can't lose, can't damage her dignity. Every time before, I would compromise. Because I read in a book that giving people the cold shoulder is the most harmful to relationships. I was afraid our relationship would die because of it. This time, however, I didn't feel panicked at all, but rather relieved. I picked up my parents at the station and took them home. They didn't mention anything about Willow at all. I knew it was because they didn't want to make me feel embarrassed. In the following two days, I accompanied them around the city. As expected, Willow didn't call, let alone show up in front of my parents. When I was sending them back to their hometown, my mother finally couldn't help it. Did you to have a fight? You're a man. 
You should be generous and yield to Willow. She's a single child. Delicate. Do you want me to talk to her? Plead for you? Don't tell me you're angry with her because she didn't pick us up. It's not worth it. Your father Anne, I don't mind. Seeing the worrying in my mother's eyes, I suddenly felt so ashamed. When a person is too humble and passive in a relationship, he loses not only his own dignity and character, but it also drags parents into losing their dignity. Just like my parents, even though they weren't happy with Willow, due to my persistence, they were also very cautious when dealing with her, afraid that they would upset Willow and put me in a difficult situation. I really wanted to slap myself. I'm really awful, mom. We broke up. I decided to be honest, odd. You really broke up. My mother was surprised. Humph, can he bear it? A leopard can't change its spots. My father didn't believe it at all. Old man, if you don't say anything, no one will take you for a mute. My mother pinched my father hard. On the one hand, she was tidying up my clothes, and on the other hand, she was nagging. If you can be together, just be together. If not, we'll find someone else. My son is so excellent. Are you afraid he won't have a wife? My mother's words made me tear up. Okay, mom, I got it. You don't have to worry. I once thought that I loved Willow very much and that I couldn't live without her. But when we really broke up, I didn't cry, but felt surprisingly calm. However, the night I sent my parents back to their hometown, I cried a lot and got really drunk. It's not that I couldn't let go of the past. It's just that I suddenly felt like I was such a clown before. I always thought that even if Willow was an iceberg, she could melt under my tenderness. But Willow is hard-hearted and will never soften. I was like Sisyphus in Greek mythology, constantly and endlessly pushing the stone that is Willow, but never able to achieve the result I wanted. My life is slowly consumed in such a futile and hopeless labor. That's my feelings for Willow. No matter how much I put in, as long as Ito Makoto found her, she would immediately leave me, leaving me in vain Nansara. Taking advantage of my drunkenness, I deleted all the messages, photos and videos related to Willow on my phone. The last thing I deleted was her number in the contact list. As a result, because I had drunk alcohol, my hand was a bit shaky and I dialed it by mistake. We've been in a cold war for three days now and I haven't called her. It's been the longest time. Is Willow also waiting for me to give in? As soon as I dialed, the call was immediately answered. Hehe, <laughs> I thought you could hold on a few more days. Do you know you were wrong? Are you not pretending to break up anymore? If you could hold on for a week, I would think you have some dignity. Now that you're getting your just desserts, aren't you embarrassed? I'm embarrassed for you. Willow's voice had a hint of triumph. I knew that even if I said it was the MIS dial, she wouldn't believe it, so I simply hung up. I could imagine Willow's irate face on the other end of the phone. She must be cursing that I'm ungrateful, right? Actually, she's right, I really lacked dignity before. From now on, I just want to slowly regain the dignity I lost. The next day, I terminated my lease. This apartment was rented after we officially established our relationship. It's close to Willow's company, but very far from my work, just for her convenience. I didn't mind the long commute and felt tired every day. Now that we've broken up, of course, there's no need for me to torment myself anymore. I rented a place near my company. The rent is reduced by two-thirds. The rent saved in a year is enough for me to buy a massage chair for my mom. The following week was fulfilling. I didn't have to wake up at 5 a.m. to buy breakfast. I could wake up at 8 and walk slowly to work. I didn't have to rush home to cook for Willow as soon as I got off work. I was able to play billiards with my colleagues and have barbecue. Jacob, we all thought you were a loner. Now it looks like you're quite sociable too. Well, I had a girlfriend before, so I had no choice. Now that we've broken up, the single colleagues looked puzzled when they heard me say this. The married colleagues, on the other hand, looked envious when they heard that I had broken up. It seems they're not having an easy time either. Without being affected by Willow's emotions, my work efficiency has also improved significantly. Especially, one of my proposals was appreciated by the boss. We're going to set up a branch in Cydia. Are you interested in taking charge of this project? If it were before, because of Willow, I would definitely refuse. In fact, I've given up many better opportunities because of her. Now, of course, I'm willing to. Not just because it means a promotion, but also because I was born in Cydia. I'm more than happy to work in my hometown. It's been half a month since I brought up the breakup with Willow. 
She finally couldn't hold back and took the initiative to call me. Although I had deleted her from my contacts, I still remembered her number. I was in a meeting with my boss at that time, so I didn't pick it up and hung up. She continued to call. I hung up again. She seemed to want to compete with me and called again. I then blocked her. When I got off work, a call came from an unfamiliar number. Hello, Jacob. You dared to block me. Are you crazy? Willow sounded both surprised and infuriated. She completely couldn't understand my actions. Aren't you afraid that I will really break up with you? Haven't we already broken up? Willow was so shocked that she couldn't speak. After a while, she said angrily, Where are you? Curry back. My key is broken. I can't open the door. You really deserve to be scolded. It turns out she went to the rental house we used to live in. I had terminated the lease, so of course the landlord changed the lock, which is why she couldn't get in. I've terminated the lease for that house. What? I've mailed your things to your company. Haven't you seen them? What? Willow exclaimed. Anything else? If not, I'm hanging up. Jacob, are you serious? Are you really breaking up with me? How would you like me to prove it? I can cooperate. Jacob, listen to me. If I agree to break up, even if you kneel and beg me in the future, I will not get back together with you. Don't shoot yourself in the foot. You can record what I'm saying as evidence. I promise never to look for you in the future. If I go back on my word, I won't have a seat on the subway for the rest of my life. Anyone who has worked in a big city knows how serious this oath is. You. You. I'm going to count to five. If you don't apologize, we are really breaking up. How about counting to ten? I can think about it a little longer. Hey. Ten. One. I've made up my mind. We're officially broken up. Anna is Willow's best friend. And we used to have a good relationship. She called in the evening. Willow is crying. You better come quickly and comfort her. I'm warning you not to be willful. I don't believe for a second that you'd truly break up. My previous lapdog image is deeply embedded in the minds of everyone who knows me. So neither my dad nor Anna would believe that I would voluntarily break up with Willow. Do you know why I broke up with her? Of course, Anna knew. Because she, Willow, and Ito Makoto were high school classmates. Ah, I understand. Aren't you just jealous of Ito Makoto? I understand how you feel. You think Willow doesn't consider your feelings and Ito Makoto crosses the line. But hear me out, they've broken up long ago. In my opinion Willow still loves you, otherwise, she would have already got back together with Ito Makoto. She's just sentimental about the past, you should know that her relationship with Ito Makoto was her biggest regret from her youth. I found out about Willow and Ito Makoto later. They were high school classmates. They initially planned to go to the same university. For that reason, Willow deliberately lowered her scores by 50 points, but they still didn't get into the same university. They went to different cities. Distance is the ultimate test of a relationship. Soon, Ito Makoto was in a relationship with a rich girl. Because the rich girl's family was wealthy and powerful, Willow was very heartbroken. She even caused a scene at Ito Makoto's school and was severely humiliated by Ito Makoto. I lowered my score by 50 points for you. How could you treat me like this? Willow, you're just stupid. It's not like I forced you to do it. Willow cried and left. In the next few years, she had no contact with Ito Makoto. Just like strangers, I met her in a business cooperation. We fell in love and even talked about marriage. Then Ito Makoto pitifully came back. It turned out that the rich girl was just playing with him, and her family had already arranged a marital partner for her. Ito Makoto was dumped. Having not become the son-in-law of a wealthy family, he was thrown away like a used tissue. He had no choice but to put aside his dignity and seek a reunion with Willow. Under normal circumstances, anyone would reject someone like that. But surprisingly, Willow didn't hate Ito Makoto at all. Instead, she accused the rich girl of being too excessive and shouldn't play with Ito Makoto's feelings. She was almost always there at Ito Makoto's beck and call. Especially after Ito Makoto acted like he was depressed. Willow took even more care of him. I used to find this absurd, returning evil with kindness. I don't know if I should praise her or rebuke her. I even started to contemplate some unrealistic, unscientific possibilities. I even suspected that Ito Makoto might have cast some black magic on Willow. Of course, I know there's no such thing as black magic. Willow just never forgot Ito Makoto. She was so eager to make up for the regrets of her youth. She didn't hesitate to use my dignity to make up for the regrets of her youth. 
Although Anna made the call, I could clearly hear a slight breathing sound on the other end of the phone. Obviously, Willow was eavesdropping on the sigh. Willow, I know you're there. I once longed to spend my life with you, but I found it impossible. In fact, ancients have long said, a forcefully bent melon is not sweet. I respect your desire to make up for regrets. Whatever you want to do with E. Tomokoto in the future has nothing to do with me. Try to understand me as well, because in the two years of being in a relationship with you, my life has been filled with too much humiliation and regret. Only breaking up can make up for it. Let's part on good terms, Willow spoke angrily. Jacob, that's enough. Do you really think I can't live without you? Listen well, it's not me begging you not to break up, but I'm giving you a chance, so you don't have to kneel down and beg me to get back together in the future. I never realized before that you're such a hypocritical person. Just keep being a hypocrite. Willow hung up the phone angrily. If I had made her so angry before, I would have been trembling in fear and hatred, wishing I could kneel down and apologize. But now, I don't have any uneasiness. It turns out that not just love can make one brave, but lack of love can also make one brave. I thought that given Willow's character, she would never contact me again since I expressed the intention to break up so resolutely. Unexpectedly, she called again that night. Since her original number was blocked by me, she had to switch to a new one. Jacob, what is my account password? During our relationship, I was responsible for keeping track of all her passwords. She thought it was too troublesome to remember these things. I answered her calmly. Even though we broke up, I didn't plan on treating her like an enemy. All right, I understand. Willow seemed to hang up the phone very calmly. But not 10 minutes had passed when she called me again. Jacob, I also forgot the password for my cloud drive. I told her, if you really can't remember your password, you can change it to a new one with a meaningful number, like Hito Makoto's birthday, height, identity card number, your first love anniversary, etc. This way others can't guess it and it won't be insecure and you won't forget it. I swear, I was seriously giving her advice with no other implications, let alone sarcasm or mockery. After all, I'm not obliged to always remember her passwords after we broke up. However, Willow began to complain discontentedly. Jacob, how long are you going to give me the silent treatment? There's no point in this. Stop being jealous. Can I apologize to you? I'm sorry? Do you know how upset I've been these days? I'm irritable and depressed. I have to check my phone dozens of times a day, guessing when you're going to get in touch with me. Do you understand this feeling of restlessness? I'd rather you had a big fight with me than be so cold towards me. Okay, I surrender. I apologize to you. I shouldn't have always ignored you for Ito Makoto. Can you stop being angry? You're a man. Don't haggle with me, a girl. I'm admitting my mistake now. Are you satisfied? I suddenly felt like laughing. Willow actually asked me if I knew how it felt to be given the silent treatment. It's like an executioner asking a death row inmate if it hurts to be beheaded. I've pleaded with Willow numerous times before not to give me the silent treatment if we have problems. Let's solve them. It's always too hurtful and torturous like this. But at that time, Willow would always cross her arms, lift her head and snort with disdain. If you don't like it, just break up with me. I reply, Willow, we are really over. How many times do I have to say it for you to believe me? I don't want to sound like a broken record. Willow's voice finally revealed a hint of panic. Jacob, is it because I forgot to pick up your parents? Isn't it enough for me to call and apologize to your parents? I know you love me, you can't bear to part with me, it must be your parents who forced you to break up, right? It's the 21st century now, how can parents still intervene in their children's emotional problems? It's too traditional, she actually pushed the responsibility of the breakup onto my parents. I was a little unhappy, Willow, my parents have never said a bad word about you. How could you vilify them like this? I just don't want to break up with you, don't get angry with me. Willow became guilty and her voice was getting smaller and smaller. Our problems have been going on for a long time, and it has nothing to do with that incident, I said earnestly. I know, you're mainly mad at me for treating Ito Makoto so well and neglecting you. I admit, there were many times when I was really excessive, but can you believe me? I really just regard him as a friend now, and I've never cheated. Even when he pretended to sleepwalk to unbutton my clothes, I refused. If it wasn't for Willow's revelation, 
I wouldn't have known that, besides pretending to be depressed. Ito Makoto could also pretend to sleepwalk, he's really smart. Willow. Since you knew that his sleepwalking was a pretense, why couldn't you see that his depression was pretense too? I think it's not that you couldn't see it, but you deliberately pretended not to know, right? I just don't understand. If you two had broken up in the first place due to external pressures, I could accept it if you two revived your old feelings, I could even step aside, but clearly, that's not the case, when you two broke up. It was him who failed you, yet you still could accept him. Do you really have no dignity? Willow was silent for a while. Jacob, do you know? For every girl, the first love is the hardest to forget. I fell in love with Ito Makoto when I first started to have feelings. For him, I scored 50 points less on the test. Do you know how much pressure I was under? My parents chided me for being disgraceful, were very disappointed in me, and even threatened to cut off the mother-daughter relationship. But back then, I didn't feel like I was wrong. I even felt I was great, making sacrifices for love. Just like the female protagonist in a movie. As long as Ito Makoto and I loved each other well, we would become a school legend that people talk about. But in the end, Ito Makoto didn't want me. He abandoned me for money. Willow started crying. Do you know how helpless and painful I was? When other girls are dumped, everyone would sympathize with her. But when I was dumped by Ito Makoto, everyone ridiculed and mocked me. They all said I deserved it, that I had shot myself in the foot. They said that since I didn't care about myself, I can't blame others for not respecting me. I indeed became a campus legend, but as a negative example, Willow sobbed as she recounted her story. So for the past few years, I dared not go home. I dared not contact my classmates, and my parents often used this to taunt me, saying that I didn't listen to others' advice and deserved this retribution. Fortunately, Ito Makoto came back to find me. I knew he was faking his illness, but I still accepted him because the more he played up his act, the more it showed that he was regretful. The reason why I treated him nicely was not because I still love him but because I wanted to show those who once ridiculed me what a magnanimous woman Willow is. I fought malice with kindness. Ito Makoto regretted it. I'm not a joke. Ito Makoto is the joke. The one who got hit in the face wasn't me. It was him. Do you understand? Woo woo. For the first time, Willow told me what was on her mind. I see, you don't want people to laugh at you for being a lapdog, so you torment me, the lapdog. Day in and day out. No dot no dot it single quotes s not that. I didn't mean to torment you dot I dot I was just testing you. Jacob, don't think that I disrespect you on the surface, but actually, it's because I have been hurt once, which makes me very vulnerable inside. You are too good to me, and I'm afraid of losing you, so I just pretend not to care about you in front of you. I read in a book that a woman cannot be too proactive. You only won't get hurt when you have firm control over a man. I really know I was wrong. I promise I won't do anything to wrong you anymore. Jacob, you are the best man in the world to me. I can't lose you. I sighed gently. People always find it important when they can't get it and treasure it when they lose it. Because you paid too much for Ito Makoto and got hurt, you torment me to maintain your initiative in the relationship. Don't you think this is too unfair to me? Willow's voice was very anxious. But you love me. Shouldn't you tolerate me if you love me? Yes. I used to love you so much, but my love for you has already been exhausted. Thank you for telling me your true feelings, this answers many of my doubts, but it won't affect my decision to break up. Goodbye. Hope it's forever. I hung up the phone. Looking at the sky outside, I sighed deeply. The damage Ito Makoto did to her made Willow grow. The harm Willow did to me woke me up, apparently. The sign of understanding love is learning to hurt. Willow was completely different from before. I don't know how she found out the address of my new home. As soon as I opened the door, I saw she had already bought breakfast waiting for me. Eat quickly, you go to work, I'll clean the house for you. Scare, I hurried to say. Willow, don't do this, we've already broken up, this isn't appropriate. She was very enthusiastic, I ran away in a panic, even forgetting to lock the door. When I got home in the evening, I was still a bit nervous. I was worried that Willow would continue to bother me. Fortunately, she wasn't at the door. I relieved and opened the door to go in. The room has been cleaned up. Turns out she's not incapable of doing household chores. She just didn't think it was necessary before. I sigh, took off my clothes, and went into the bathroom to take a bath. Suddenly, Willow, 
clad in pink pajamas, broke into the bathroom with tempting eyes. Jacob, let's make up. She bit her lip. Turns out she never left. Willow is very beautiful. I was once so infatuated with her body, her smell. But now I feel sick. Willow, what do you think you are? A social butterfly. What do you think of me? An animal that only thinks with its lower half. Body isn't a chip to save a relationship. This is not only an insult to yourself, but also an insult to me. Go away. I'm so disappointed in you. Seeing that I was really angry, Willow turned tail with fright. She flung herself at me and hugged me tightly. Jacob, can you be less cruel to me? I'll really break down. I just want to be with you. Am I wrong? I love you. Can you give me another chance? Please, she said, randomly kissing me all over my face. Tears mixed with saliva. Enough. I pushed her away. The floor was wet and slippery, and she fell. I hope we can break up gracefully. The more you do this, the more disgusted I will be with you. I left to stay at a hotel, and behind me came the sound of Willow's desperate crying. But I didn't look back. Tears only work for those who care about you. Now, I just think she's annoying. To avoid being disturbed by Willow, I didn't even go home, and I slept in the company every night. Willow was relentless and came to my company to look for me every day. Anna told me that she resigned just to pursue me. If she couldn't get in, she would just wait foolishly below. Many co-workers tried to persuade me. I just smiled and didn't explain. They meant well, but they didn't know how many hardships I had endured. It started to rain, lightning and thundering. Willow, in the storm, looked shaky, as if she could fall at any moment. But she stubbornly refused to leave. I sighed took an umbrella and went in front of her. Willow was soaked all over, her face was pale, but her expression was very excited. Jacob, I knew you wouldn't abandon me. I'm going back to the branch in my hometown. Today is my last day, work here, so you don't have to come here anymore. Consider this umbrella our farewell gift. I stuffed the umbrella into Willow's hand, turned my back and walked back, and I was wet too. But my heart was as clear as a sunny day, without a trace of damp feeling. I've really let go. Anna called me again in the evening. She has a fever, all because of you. Willow's voice came through the phone, sounding extremely weak. Jacob, I need you. I have a fever of 45 degrees. Can you come and stay with me? 45 degrees. Who would get a fever of 45 degrees? Willow was speechless, of course. She remembers that line. Only the person saying it has become me. I believe she loves me now because she has finally become stupid in front of me. But this can affect my decision to break up. Jacob, enough is enough. Willow is actually sick. It may not be 45 degrees, but it's 39 degrees. Aren't you going too far? Come man see her now. Take her to the hospital. But I've already booked a ticket for the 9 p.m. train back home tonight. Can't you postpone it for Willow? No. My parents are waiting for me. Anna is very angry. Jacob, you always said how much you loved Willow. It's all lies. You're no better than Ito Makoto. Neither of you are good people. I doubt you ever loved Willow. What love? You truly disgust me. Willow sobbed and defended me. Anna. Don't say that about him. He's different from Ito Makoto. It's me who wronged him. You're still defending him at this time. I think you'll be hurt by love your whole life. Anna was indignant. I hung up the phone and didn't feel like explaining. Water turns into ice. Love turns into indifference. I glanced at my watch. It was already 7.30 p.m. I picked up my suitcase and went to the station. At 8.30, I was on the platform, and Anna appeared supporting Willow. She was really sick. Not only was her face pale, but even her lips were white. Her eyes were swollen like a goldfish's eyes. She hugged my leg as soon as she saw me and would not let go. Jacob, may I implore you, can you not abandon me? I can't live without you. I shook my head, indifferently. Willow, stop torturing yourself, we are over. Anna was furious. Willow, get up. Don't beg him. Isn't he just a stinking man? It's not hard to find a toad with three legs. There are plenty of two-legged men. Let's go. I'll introduce you to someone better. You don't have to degrade yourself. You have lost all women's face. Anna wanted to take Willow away, but she refused to move. No. I don't want anyone else. I only want Jacob. What's the use of my dignity without him? What's wrong with losing face? It's not the first time I've lost face. Cough, cough. With her cold and crying, Willow's voice had long been hoarse. Suddenly, a voice was heard. 
Willow, have you gone mad? How could you leave me for him? How could you be so indignified for him? I am your only lover. Ito Makoto appeared. He was furious and tried to get Willow up. Get lost. Get lost. I don't want to see you. You ruined my happiness. What only lover? You are a scum. This is the first time why I've seen Willow treat Ito Makoto so rudely. I was surprised. And Ito Makoto was even more surprised. He suddenly gave Willow a harsh slap. Bastard. I think your fever has confused your brain. He looked at me viciously and said, It's all your fault. What did you tell her? Otherwise, why would she despise me? Obviously she is a dog I have tamed. As he spoke more and more angrily, Ito Makoto rushed over and gave me a heavy punch. I was about to dodge, but Willow, who had looked exhausted earlier, suddenly exploded. I won't let you bully Jacob. She jumped up and pushed Ito Makoto hard, pushing him off the platform. Just then, a train rushed into the station. Ito Makoto didn't even have time to scream before he turned into a lump of flesh. He was always talking about killing himself. This time his dream finally came true. Willow was sentenced to seven years for manslaughter. After the verdict was pronounced, I wanted to go to prison to see her. She refused the visit. The letter to me only had one sentence. Jacob, I only hope you will always remember me at my most beautiful.